how many ways can you arrange five things? There's two ways that I want you to be able to do this. Let's assume that the five things we're arranging are A, B, C, D, and E, just like Scrabble tiles or something. It could have been anything. It could have been an apple, banana, carrot, uh, durian, and uh, I don't know, eyeball. So the ways that I want you to be able to do it are to think about how many options you have for each of the five spaces that you can arrange things into. How many different options do you have for the very first slot when you're arranging these five things? Well, it could be A or B or C or D or E, so you have five options. But at that point, you've now used up one of your tiles. So by the time you're choosing a next thing to put in the next slot, how many options do you have? You're down to four because you've already used one up. And then by the time you get to the next slot, you have only three letters to choose from. Then you have only two letters to choose from. And when you're deciding which one to put last, you don't get a choice. There's only one option you can use for that. So the way that you can calculate this is five times, four times, three times, two times, one, which is 120. And if you're being asked this question, your teacher probably covered something called factorials. It's called five bang, at least that's what computer scientists call it. I have a button for that somewhere. Ah, oh, I used to. What happened to this guy? Oh, there it is, it's way up there. Five exclamation mark, can you see that? Does the same thing for me. It takes five and multiplies it by everything else that's lower than five down to one. Five, four, three, two, one. Nice. So you can also use this factorial method, but it's the same thing. And by the way, this method has a special name called the fundamental counting principle. It's the idea that if you can figure out how many options you have for each of the spaces you're arranging things into, you can just multiply the number of options by each other. Same way as if you had like five hats and 10 shirts, there's 50 different hat shirt pairs that you could possibly make. There's one other way though, if you're arranging five items and the order matters, we have something called a permutation. On your calculator, you're probably gonna have to type 5P5, and you're gonna use a button that is NPR. N is the number of things that you have, and R is the number that are being arranged. It's useful in that sometimes R is not the same as N. Maybe you had like 10 tiles, but you only got to pick five to put on your shelf or something. In this case, though, we have five things and we are arranging them so that order matters. That's what the permutation part means. We're arranging five of them. So let me go find that on the calculator. Five, here it is, NPR is written there. P5 also gives me 120. Not a surprise. Love it. This is called permutations. I like it. You're going to be seeing more of that probably if you're being asked this question. The wrong answer is to list all 120 combinations. Ain't nobody got time for that. Best of luck.